So, maybe you're thinking about making some big changes or setting some ambitious goals for yourself. Maybe you want to lose 20 pounds or read through the Bible. Maybe you want to run a marathon or repair a broken relationship. Whatever your big goal is, the temptation is to expect to go straight from here to here, or from here to here. The reality is, there are a lot of small steps between big decisions and big results. Challenges and obstacles await. At some point, you might even want to quit. But stand firm. Don't be disappointed with slow progress. Don't be overwhelmed by the destination. Rather, focus on what you can do today. Skip dessert. Read a chapter. Go for a run. Make a phone call. The more difficult the journey, the more rewarding the destination. And it can all start today with just one small step. Well, good morning. Happy New Year. I, I thank you so much for spending the first weekend of the year here with us. We are so honored to have you at Church Online as well. We're so glad you're joining us. We're going to talk about fresh start. The things that we're going to talk about the next few moments is life-changing stuff. I, I know a lot of people come into the new year and they make resolutions. Some of you may have done that. And we're going to talk about so much more than that. Uh, the reality is most people make resolutions within three days. Uh, they've given up on it. Uh, I, for me, a resolution lasts about three minutes when it comes to food. You know what I'm saying? And I, I tend to be in the right place. There's donuts here at Alive, and I'm like, oh, that, out the door. I'll start next week. So we, we're talking about some real life-changing stuff. How do we really change our lives? Now, why would we do a series like this? When we talk about fresh start, and we're going to look today at five key areas of our lives that we need to focus on that, that comes from one area. But why is this important? If you go back to last week's talk, uh, we said, let's make this our best year ever. And a lot of you said, I want to do that, right? 2015, our best year ever. In fact, we, we said, let's learn this verse. 71% of you said, we're going to learn this verse. So I thought we would read it out loud together today just to see how you're doing. And if you haven't memorized this verse yet, uh, this is from last week. We need to know this verse coming into this year. Let's read it together. Now, all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within me to accomplish infinitely more than I might ask or think. Man, that's life-changing stuff. And here's what we said last week. And if you missed it, you can go back online and see the archive, alivechurch.com, because we ar archive all of our services. But we said this, um, at the end of life, there are only two things we're going to hear. We're either going to hear, well done, this is from Matthew 25, good and faithful servant, or you wicked, lazy servant. And we said pretty much all of us would rather hear, well done, right? I mean, it's a no-brainer. So this is about me being responsible as the manager of all the resources God has given me. So that's why we're doing a series like this. Uh, we, we want to get to the end of our lives, individually and corporately, and say, man, I did it. I did what I was put on this earth to do, what God planned for me to do. God has a plan for you, and it's good. And so I live in that tension of, man, I, I want to I live the plan he has for me versus getting to the end of my life and going, I blew it. And some of us, we get to this point at the beginning of 2015, Mike said, do you need a fresh start? And we go, I blew it last year. Well, what do we do about that? It's time for a fresh start. And from this moment on that we can say, I'm going to live the plan God has for me. That's where I want to live. How about you? Yeah. Now, I, I want you to see this. When it comes to plans, God has a plan for your life, and God is a planner. Now, you may not be by nature a planner. Um, it, it's, it wasn't my nature early on. I, I'm a real pretty, I like new adventures and change. But I've learned the value of planning over the years. Uh, in Ephesians 1.10, this says, it says that God planned to bring all history to its what? God planned. He planned. Aren't you glad he has a plan for your life? Wouldn't you hate to think that you're, you're heading into 2015 and God says, man, I don't have any plan for you. Whatever happens, happens. And by the way, if you don't have any plans going into 2015, congratulations. You're already successful at the end of next year. 
because it doesn't matter what happens to you this year. Yeah, because you will, you know, without a plan, anything will get you there. You're, you're there. Well, we don't want to live like that. We want to be prepared for what God, God's plan is for our life. And that means that we need to do some planning with him. God has some goals for us to get into Christ. What are your goals? I want to talk to you about some goals uh, this year for your life. We see that that's how God, that's how God lives. That's how God acts. He has a plan for my life. Jeremiah 29, 11. Ephesians 2.10, he has a plan for you. And you need to see that it's a good plan. So we have a part in this then. We need to start saying, okay, God, I want to discover your plan. I need to start making some goals and plans and living that out. So I want to talk to you about some healthy goals for a healthy life. And we're going to talk about how we do this over the next 30 days, how we get involved in this with God. If you have your Bibles, open up to Romans chapter 12. Because I'm going to walk through that here in just a moment. I'll give you a few other verses, but I'm going to just walk through. Paul gives us some things here to walk through these five different areas of our life. And one of the things we're doing for this series is we started a Facebook group. We have a bunch of specialists, one in, in, in all these five areas that I'm going to talk about today. They would love to help you out. We've met with them a couple months ago. We have doctors. Uh, we're, we're in, as we look through these five areas, you'll see what they are. And we, we all have gotten together. They're experts. And as you set goals, we'd love to, this is a place where you can get some help, some feedback, or just share what's going on in your life. So go to facebook.com slash groups slash Alive Fresh Start. You'll, you'll want to write that down. And if you don't get it in this moment, Mike will show you this again at the end. But uh, already people are joining the group. And this will help you get on course this will help you get on track. And if you have questions, uh, they're going to be able to answer your questions and there will be feedback in there. I'm in that group already, so join our group for the next 30 days, okay? Now, this is what it looks like. This is the picture of what we're talking about, the five key areas. And the very center is faith. Everybody say faith. I, I, wanna, I want us to really lean into this. This is an important one. But from there, Paul in Romans 12 gives us five areas. Talks about our faith, our fitness, our focus, that is our minds, our, our friendships, our relationships, and our finances. Those five key areas. If you're going to live a healthy life, you got to have goals. You got to be healthy in those five areas. I mean, isn't it true that you could go back to 2014 and you could think about some people who were famous who, who had it all financially, but they didn't have this part of their life together? And they were miserable. You may know some people right now that they're rich, but they're miserable. Isn't it true that you may know some people who they have relationships, but they're miserable because the relationships aren't healthy, because this isn't in order. Their faith's not in order. Uh, you know, what good does it do to have a marriage that makes you miserable, to, to not have a good, healthy relationship with your kids? You see, those relationships, what makes them all work is if we have this one thing in order. So that's where we start. Now, my question for you today is, what is your goal in your spiritual life in 2015? Have you considered that? And if you haven't, my prayer is by the end of the service that you would say, I'm going to prayerfully, with God, come up with a plan for 2015 for my spiritual life. Now, why is the spiritual life so important? Here's what Jesus said in Matthew 6. He said, let's read this together. Let's read it out loud, church online. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. All what things? Well, Jesus has just been talking about uh, all, all of our needs as far as our clothing, our homes, um, what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink. He said, look, if you'll make the kingdom your primary concern, if you'll seek first the kingdom, these things will be added as well. Now, what I want to tell you today is we need to have goals in all those areas, but they stem from the very primary goal of seeking God's kingdom first. That's why our logo uh, for our values here at Alive, if you've, if you've never seen it, it really centers around this one core value, actively worshiping God, seeking first his kingdom. That's one of our core values. We say that that's it. So that in my finances, my finances, it's worship to God. In my fitness, I, why would I even care about fitness? Because it's worship to God. 
how I handle my body. And I'll show you what Paul says about that. In my relationships, my friendships, it's worship to God. What I do with my mind, how I think, that's worship to God. It all comes from that one thing, actively worshiping God, my spiritual life. So I'm going to put it in one uh, quick sentence for you this weekend. As you make your plans, plan with God. If I get you to remember one thing, this is life-changing stuff, okay, uh, for this week. Church Online, let's read this outline. As you make your plans, plan one more time with enthusiasm. Aren't you guys ready for the best year ever? Yeah, okay? So as you make your plans, let's say it one more time. As you make your plans, plan with God. Now you can see I'm being pretty presumptuous here. I'm presuming you will plan. And if you don't make a plan, I'm telling you, it won't matter where you end up next year. If you, if you end up financially bankrupt, you say, well, wait a minute, I, I don't want to end up bankrupt. Well, then make a plan financially. I, I don't want to end up divorced next year. Well, then make a plan relationally. I don't want to end up uh, distanced from God next year. Then make a plan spiritually. As you make your plans, plan with God. Is this biblical? Yeah. God has a plan for you. The Proverbs writer says this. Commit your plans to the Lord. Then you will succeed. So let's start. Let's get in touch with his plan. Now, how important is this in our lives? I I have a a dear friend who is... um, He's a, a mentor to, to me. He's a PhD, uh, Dr. Gene, and uh, he, he also comes and pours into our staff a lot. And uh, he just recently did a session with us uh, talking about our goals and planning. And um, I asked him real quickly, so it's a kind of a rough video, but I asked Gene, I said, hey, would you just let me interview you for my blog? So this sounds a little rough, but I want you to hear Gene talk about SMART goals. That is, that we need in our planning. What's this? I'm so glad you're joining us today. And this is my dear friend, Dr. Gene Huddle. He is just uh, one of my mentors and one of my favorite people in the whole world. I, I'm so glad to be with you today. You. And you're, you've been coaching us a little bit today. Yeah. And we just finished the session. But I wanted to ask you about, you introduced me to the idea of SMART goals. Right. And I just blogged about that. And, Coming to this time of year, getting ready for New Year, yeah. it's time for me, man. I'm putting out there, my team's putting out goals. Uh, what is a SMART goal? Okay. And do we need goals? Yeah. Why is it important? So, yeah, like they say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we need goals. And uh, for most of us, you know, we sometimes set goals, maybe New Year's resolutions, we call them sometimes, but they don't often turn out to be goals that are actually met. And so then we start talking about, well, what then is an effective, successful goal? And so we use the acronym SMART to describe the characteristics of a really good, powerful goal. And it's kind of simple, but it's it's really useful. It makes it more memorable. It does. Yeah. So we say, first of all, it has to be specific. What exactly do you want to have accomplished? It has to be very much to the end result that you want, specific. Yes, it has to be measurable. How are you gonna know when you've reached your goal? If you have a weight goal, for example, how are you gonna measure your weight on a regular basis? How many pounds do you actually want to gain or lose? <laughs> you should lose. I'm on the loose uh, side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not too many of us wanna gain weight uh, these days. Is it achievable? Is it something I can do? Now, sometimes we say, well, um, whatever you really want to do, you can do, but in a a way you have to, I can't say I'd like to lose 50 pounds if I know that I can't or shouldn't. Is it achievable? Is it attainable? And that's a really good one too, because a lot of people say uh, whatever you can conceive, you can achieve. But there is more to that than just saying, I'm gonna be a millionaire this year and I've only made 100 bucks last year. Well, that's right. And then depending on whether it's a personal goal or an organizational goal, is it realistic? In other words, is that a goal that's actually going to make your life better, make the organization more, organization more effective? And that's the R. Stronger? The R, yeah. Okay. Is it realistic? So we could say, well, I'd like to, I'd like to try to get uh, on the first ship to the moon this year. And you say, well, you know, that's not really very realistic. <laughs> so we have to be careful that we're setting goals that actually are realistic. Um, and so all those things, the, uh, uh, 
the, the, and then we need the T. What's the T? The T. The T is time based. Mm. So I might say I, my goal is to um, to lose 20 pounds, but I don't set a time on it. So I get to the end of the year and I say, well, I didn't really mean this year. I meant some time. And so it's usually time based. So uh, when is it going to be? Like, so let me put these up here for you in case you want to write these down. What are the SMART goals that Gene gave us? And I want to really challenge you when it comes to your spiritual life today because everything stems from that. These five areas that we're going to look at over the next few weeks uh, for having a healthier life, they all come from our spiritual life. So what's the very specific uh, goal that you could have in your spiritual journey? For instance, mine this year has to do with my Bible reading. Um, and uh, I, I've only, I'm kind of weird in how that I, I try to remember my goals. So this year, my goals are a math equation to help me remember them. So it wouldn't make any sense, sense to anybody else but me. So the part that has to do with my spiritual life is the number 66, which there are 66 books in the Bible. Only one time in my life have I taken a year and read through the entire Bible because I spend so much time reading the Bible, I don't usually read straight through. Well, for me... Uh, it's a very realistic goal. I have friends who do it all the time, and I've done it one other time. So this year, I'm going to read through the Bible. So maybe yours is saying, hey, I want to do a, a Bible reading plan to help my spiritual life. If you've never read the Bible, don't make it all 66 books. Uh, you know, maybe make it uh, the New Testament, uh, maybe a few minutes a day. Don't do things that will discourage you, but be very specific about your spiritual goal. Is it measurable? You can see my, my 66 books is very measurable. Uh, there's already plans that break it down every day. How do you measure it? Is it achievable? Yeah, I know it's achievable. I've done it one other time, and I've got a friend who's done it like 28 times for reading through Scripture. Uh, and the, the, this is the part that's really important. Is it realistic or relevant for me? That's very relevant for my spiritual growth. I, I need to do this. And for me, um, uh, when I get to Deuteronomy, uh, Leviticus, anybody read those books? You know, that's when I start saying, uh, is this really relevant? And uh, as a pastor, I'm saying, yeah, it's in here for a reason. And then time-based. Well, yeah, for me, I put 12 months on it. And I, I do, I love living my goals from, uh, from year to year. So look at SMART goals as we're going through this today. And I'm going to challenge you to do it in five areas. So the first one is in your faith area. Nurturing your soul. Now, where do we get these five areas? It's, again, it's in Romans 12. And Paul starts out right away. He spent, he spent the first 11 chapters of Romans talking about God's grace, God's mercy. Anybody glad for that in your life? And he, he talks about God's grace and mercy. And then he says, in the NIV, he says, Therefore, this is how you should live. Uh, in, in the NLT, he says, And so, because of... Dear brothers and sisters, now you may be here or joining us online and you say, well, I'm not a Christian yet. Man, I get, get that and I'm so glad you're here that you're, you're saying you're exploring your faith as we start this year. You need to see this is about taking that faith decision. Because you have faith, when you make a faith decision, Paul says this is how you should live. So this is, this is about nurturing your soul. He goes on in Romans 12, 3. He says, be honest in your evaluation of yourselves. Let's read it together. Measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. How do I measure my life and my success? It's by my faith. Why would it be faith instead of one of those other areas? You see, if I measure my life by my money, then my life depends on whether or not the Dow goes up or down. It, those are things that I, I can't control. It, it, in fact, if you said, I'm only worth whatever my financial worth is, my self-worth equals my financial worth, you're in trouble. I mean, what if the dollar goes away? When it, when it comes, if we said, I'm going to measure my life by my fitness, you could be physically fit, and you need to do your part, you could be in shape, but you cannot control in the long term uh, your, the deterioration of your body. What if something happens to you this year that's unexpected? And by the way, setting goals um, and having a plan has nothing to do to it all coming out exactly as it is. How many of you know that? You make a plan and it's not going to work out perfect, right? I mean, we, Kathy and I, we've already, we, we have goals and plans for this year, and our plan has already been messed up this year. But we're trusting God. that God will not waste an experience. You need to know that. He will not waste an experience. He won't waste a day. He won't waste a week or a year. 
my wife had to get on a plane yesterday. Her dad is in critical condition. Well, that wasn't in our plan. But do we believe God will use it? Yeah, and we're praying. And, and that's just a part of life. You still make plans and goals because when opportunity knocks, you want to be ready for what God has for you. So make sure that you're measuring your life by your faith. Because all those other things will pass away, but our faith lasts for eternity. In Romans 14, uh, Paul said this. Let's read this together. Everything that does not come from faith is sin. So faith is so important. Measuring our lives by our faith. Set a faith goal. What's your faith goal this year? Where do you want to be next year? Uh, So faith, nurturing your soul. Let's say this again together. As you make your plans, plan with God. So you're not just saying, okay, God, I'm going to come up with this wild plan. No, say, Lord, what would you have me do this year? I want my plan to be in line with your plan. Ask for wisdom. Prayerfully and carefully make your plans. Do it in your faith area. Make a plan in faith. Second is fitness. This is one we love, right? Everybody's ready this time of year. Woo, I'm going to get fit. Uh, And then you came to church and we offered donuts. Somebody said, well, if you're saying fitness, shouldn't you get rid of the donuts? I'm like, no, it's self-control. You're, you're going to be donuts other places too. Learn to deal with it, okay? I'm here to help you. I'll tempt you with the donuts and tell you don't to eat them. Okay, fitness. This is strengthening your body. Is this a spiritual issue? Yeah, absolutely it is. Paul, in Romans 12, the very first verse, he said this, I plead with you to give your what? Give your bodies to God. Listen. Every since time with man on earth, God has had a place where he would dwell. Uh, Early on with David, he had David, King David in the Old Testament, build a temple for his dwelling place. Then later, Solomon, David's son, built a temple for God to dwell in that place. Then we come to the New Testament, and God said, it's not about me dwelling in a building. You are my dwelling place. We, our bodies, are his dwelling place. He said, Paul says this, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? That's where he dwells, right here within us. It's not in these walls here. Uh, There's nothing sacred about this brick and mortar uh, of this building. And Church Online will tell you that. There's nothing sacred about the camera. It's us. We're the dwelling place of God. We're his temple. Everybody say, I am his temple. You need to see that. And if you're making a decision to follow Christ, you need to see that. So Paul says, give your bodies to God. In fact, he says it's part of spiritual worship. So as you make your plans, plan with God. Plan your fitness goals with God. Where do you want to be this year? Now, yeah, things can happen this year that you don't expect physically. But get prepared. Be physically fit. Maybe there's some things that God's speaking to you about uh, as, you, as you pray about this, you may find that maybe I need to change a food habit. Maybe I need to change an exercise habit. Your doctor will tell you the same things. If you go to your doctor and he's, you say, I want to be in shape, he's, they'll say, well, it's on how you eat, and you're going to have to work out. Right? That's the plan, right? I mean, that's it. That's God, God has made this very simple. I, if you, I'd love to have the pill, wouldn't you? Whatever that pill is, it just makes me look like a... It doesn't work that way. God's got a plan. It's so simple. So make a plan in this area. The third area is your focus, your mind. Renewing your mind. Our minds are so important. Again, these are resources that God has given us. We're going to get to the end of life, and we're going to hear one of two things. Well done when it comes to how we treated our temple, the temple of God. We're going to hear well done, or we're going to hear hear you wicked, lazy servant when it comes to our mind. What, what, What is it you think about? What is your goal this year for your thought life? What is your goal to grow your mental life, your memory? What are your goals in this area? Your focus, set a goal in renewing your mind. Paul said this, just walking through Romans, you see all five of these areas. Uh, We see it's all about our spiritual life. He comes to our, our, our physical, our body. And then he says this in Romans 12 too, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Let's read it out loud. Read the rest with me. But God, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. God transforms me by changing the way I think. You can set simple goals here about reading scripture, about what you're putting into your mind, about your thought life. Now, I love this word transform here. 
This is the word that uh, is used, we talk about, for going from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Uh, uh, the metamorph, metamorpho is the word in the Greek, which we get the word metamorphosis from. And that's what Paul says, you will go from, you will be transformed from your old life to this new life, the plan that God has for you. I, I mean, you know, if, if I'm crawling around living like a caterpillar, and God's saying, you could fly, man. You could have all this color and this beauty, and you can fly. I want to fly. And, and that's what Paul illustrates here. He says, God has a plan for you. And the way you get there, the way you're transformed is by the renewing of your mind. So my question for you is, what is your goal when it comes to your mind this year? Are you just going to let it go wherever it wants to go? Because if you do, you're going to end up in trouble. Or are you going to say, God, show me your plan. Show me what you want me to do. Show me how to develop my mind for you. And it, I, I want to encourage you. It should include part of reading God's word. Proverbs writer said this, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. What you think about, you become. Our thoughts become feelings, and feelings become actions. That's the way it works. We don't wake up one day and just do all these actions and go, Whoa, where did that come from? No, it was a thought that we started feeling about. My, my grandmother always told me, she said, Jeff, you are what you eat, especially when she'd see me drinking Diet Coke or something. She'd say, you are what you eat or drink. So I would always quote this verse to her. She was a really a, a godly woman. And I always say, no, Grandma, what Scripture says is you are what you think. And she'd look at me and she'd go, well, that's true too, but you are what you eat. <laughs> I'm just going to stay with Scripture. You are what you think, Okay. Uh, this is so important for us. So what are your goals for your thought life this year, for developing your mind? That's a resource that God has given you. So set a goal in the area of focus and renewing your mind. Because uh, as you plan, make your plans with God. So make sure that you're planning with God. God, what do you, where do you want me to grow? Wouldn't you hate to come to 2016 and God say, man, I have this incredible opportunity for you, but you're not ready. It's going to pass you by because you didn't grow where I wanted you to this year. This is about growth. I, I want to be ready, don't you? Yeah. The fourth area is in friends. This is encouraging each other in our relationships. This is so important in our life. Uh, if you want to have a healthy life, you got to have healthy relationships. That's very important for us. Now, Paul, as he's walking through in Romans 12, we see this. He says, just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. Now, he's going to show us that if we become a follower of Jesus, we become a part of God's body, his family. That's the illustration for who we are as a church. So those of you who are considering making that decision in your spiritual journey, you, be, you, come, you come to this place where you say, I put my faith in Jesus. You belong to his body, the church, the family. He says, we are many parts of one body, and we all, what's it say? We all belong to each other. We have an innate desire to belong. And that longing comes from the fact that we are designed to belong to the body of Christ, to the church, to his family. So when we make a faith decision, this is it. This is where we belong. Now, you may say, well, I'm not sure I like the style of a live church. That's cool. You, you, let, let us help you find another church that you can belong and be a part of. But for your faith's sake, you got to find a place you belong. And, and for your, the health of using your gifts and talents, you got to find a place where you belong. You belong. You are a member of God's family. We, we renew our membership every year around here. you got the green sheet, and we're going to talk about that at the end. You can fill that out. Uh, it's just, it says that we're going we're gonna to walk in accountability with one another. But all that's saying is we're already members of God's family if we're a Christian. If you're a follower of Christ, you're a member of God's family. So I, I hear Christians all the time say, I don't be, want to be a member of anything. Well, if you're a follower of Christ, you're a member of the family. You belong. It's just a matter of how we're going to walk that out. We need to have healthy relationships. Paul said this in Romans 12, 8. He says, God has given us different gifts and talents for doing certain things well. You see, we're here to help one another, to encourage one another. And you have gifts and talents that God has given you to do certain things well. Don't, don't focus on the things you do not so well. Focus on the things you do well. 
You know, I, I, I've had friends tell me, you need to focus on your weaknesses. And no, you don't. You don't focus on weaknesses, except in weaknesses of choice. I've talked about that before. If a weakness of choice would be like, uh, I'm always late. If you're always late, that's a weakness of choice. You need to know that. That's not a, God, that's not a gift from God. You know that? Some of you are like, really? I thought that was just God's makeup of me. No, that's a choice, okay? Um, uh, work on those kind of weaknesses, weaknesses of choice. But when it comes to other weaknesses, you, you have gifts that God has given you to do certain things well. And, and you belong in, in, in God's family, in, your, in the business world. Do those things well, that you do well. Focus on those things. Set a goal for those things that you do well. What are your goals in those areas? You know, if, if it's in uh, business, what's your goal in your business this year? If you're a businessman or woman, you're like, God's given me a gift for business. I'm great at that. Well, then wh- how does God want you to develop that? When you plan, make your plan with God. Ask him, how do you want me to grow in this area? Whatever your area be. If you're a teacher, that's what you do well. Uh, prayerfully consider, Lord, What goals do you want me to have as a teacher? As I teach these kids, these junior high, these high schoolers, these little kids, what goal do you want me to have uh, to do what I do and do it well? So as you plan, make your plans with plan with God. Let's say it again together. As you plan, your no, as you make your plans, plan one more time. As you make your plans, plan with God. Plan in the area of your friendship. The last one is our finances. And why is this important? Well, Paul's going to dive right into this in the very next few verses. Our finances, that is that we enjoy God's abundance. Well, I want to live my finances, I want them to be in a healthy way, God's way, so that I can enjoy it. It's true that we all know somebody, or we've heard of somebody, who has all the money they need, but they're still not enjoying life. Well, we want to enjoy what God has for us. And God shows us his plan. So what is your plan financially this year? And if you don't have a plan, then what will it matter where you're at financially next year? You'll probably be in trouble. So we need to make our plans and plan with God as we plan, plan with God when it comes to finances. Paul goes on, the very next few verses, Romans 13. He talks about our spiritual life. Then he talks about our bodies and how important that is for our worship. He talks about our mind, our relationships, how important they are that we have a healthy life, and this is a part of worship. And then he goes on and says, pay your taxes. I, I want to pay my taxes, right? I, I mean, if you've ever dealt with the IRS, and if you work for the IRS, we love you around here. We love the worst sinners in the world. I'm, we're glad you're here. Uh, I'm sorry. I, we love the, I better just leave that. Pay your taxes. Give to everyone what you owe them. How many of you in 2015, you want to pay your bills? I mean, even if you owe nothing, there are still bills. If you drove here, you got gas bills, you got taxes on your home, uh, the electric bill, you got bills. I want to pay my bills. Paul Paul says this, do these things, pay your taxes, um, give everyone what you owe them, owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. Paul really challenges us here in our finances, in the lifestyle of our finances, that we would live out of debt. Uh, That's one reason we do the Financial Peace University. We want to help you get debt free. We don't want you to be a slave to to paying bills, to paying things, that you would live the way God has. This is about us managing something that God has given us. Now, as I said, uh, this is so important in our lives. Jesus said it's so important that he said, if you're untrustworthy about worldly wealth, the things of this world, the finances of this world, uh, all the, uh, all the uh, uh, mammon is the word that he uses here, all the, the resources of this world, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? When we get to the end of this life, we're going to hear one of two things, either well done, good and faithful servant, or you wicked, lazy servant. I want to be trusted with the true riches of heaven. I want God to say, man, I had a plan for your life, and you lived it. Well, Lord, what about the times I stumbled, I, I fell, that I didn't live it? Man, overall, you just kept coming back. I would just keep getting up, and you, kept, you lived it. This is fresh start time. That's where I want to live. How about you guys? So as you make your plans, plan with, plan with God. Uh, scripture talks about planning and how important it is. The only time that Scripture ever gives a negative about planning is when 
a group of people were making their plans without God. They were boasting and saying, we're going to go live like this and do that with our business. And James, the writer, says, "Uh, you're not even considering God's will here. But make your plans with God. Everywhere else, it's very positive, saying, commit your plans to God. Plan with God. God has a plan for you. So make a plan this year in your faith, your fitness, your focus, your friends, your finances. Have a plan. Those are five key areas of your life. And I want you to see how they all stem from that one key element of faith. Jesus said it. Seek first his kingdom, and all these other things will be added to you as well. You see, if I have my health in order, but I don't have my spiritual life in order, what good does that do me after this life? What good would that do me in God's eternal plan for me? If I have a great mind, a clear thought life, but I enter the next life without putting my faith in Christ, what good does that do me for eternity? Or any of these areas. I can have all the money of the world, but I'm not taking it with me. So it starts here in your faith. Now I want you, if you would, take out your connection card. And I I have a next step for you this week. And I'm gonna ask you to fill this out, Church Online. You can just check, uh, uh, you had this digitally. But I've already put mine, I've already written mine actually, but I checked it off. I will prayerfully set a faith goal. Now that may be for you, the membership commitment. It may be something where you say, um, I, you know, it's daily reading. I'm going to start reading the Word, the Bible, every day. Or prayer. And, and make it a simple step for you. Like if you say, I'm not really a prayer person. I've never prayed before. Don't start out and say, I'm going to pray an hour a day. That's not going to work, okay? Start out by saying, I'm going to get up and pray for three minutes in the morning before I go to work. Something like that. Uh, start there. and Let it grow. But prayerfully, you know, make your plans with God. And and I'm not asking you to make that plan right now. I'm asking you to make a commitment to make that plan this week. To get with God and say, okay, I'm going to have a faith goal this year. Drop this in the offering bucket here in just a few moments, and I'm going to be praying for you. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to to look at, uh, um, I want to go back to these SMART goals real quick. If you didn't get this, as you make your faith goal this week, make sure it's specific. Mine's very specific. I'm reading through uh, scripture. I know if I'm behind or where I'm at because I just divided it up by the day. Make it measurable, achievable, realistic. Make s- it's something relevant in your life. Again, the relevant part would be you know, praying three minutes a day versus an hour a day if you've never prayed before, and time-based. In other words, I, I can measure where I'm at uh, in reading. I, I want to help you now with your spiritual Um, that's your spiritual goal. One of the things we do around here uh, once a month is we take communion together. And the reason we do this is Jesus told us to do it. This is one of the few things that Jesus said, I want you to practice doing this and and continue doing this uh, after I'm gone. So I'm gonna ask the ushers if they would come and pass out the elements, the bread and the juice. Church online, you guys can grab something there to to do this with us. And... uh, Again, you need to know this. You do not need to be a member of a live church to take communion with us. Scripture talks about us being a, a member of God's family, that we're followers of Christ. Now, why do we do this? Why did Jesus uh, even have us take communion? He told us that we do this to remember what he did for us. Well, what are we remembering? I, I want to just walk you through that real quick as we prepare for communion. We're remembering what he did for us on the cross. Here's what he did for us on the cross. You see, God has this perfect standard. God is holy, and his standard is perfect. It's up here. Now, the opposite of that would be uh, you know, evil. It would be Satan down here. And, and if we looked at people in the world, we might say, well, if God's perfect, Jesus is perfect, then who would be close to that? And you know, who's on the scale? Where would we put them? I, you know, who would be a really good person? I'd say, Billy Graham, he's a pretty good guy, don't you guys think? So I'm putting Billy Graham kind of in here. I'm thinking, that's a pretty good guy. But Billy Graham himself, I've heard him talk about uh, his own sin, and he'd tell you he's not perfect. I, I would think somebody like Mother Teresa, pretty good person, don't you think? I don't know where you'd put her from Billy Graham, but I've heard her talk about uh, in, in her, before she passed away, she talked about her, her own sin and her shortcomings. And she would say, I'm not perfect, I'm not God. But man, I look at her life and she lived a good, godly life. There's still a little bit of a gap. 
You know, and then I think of people like, uh, you know, Adolf Hitler. Um, Adolf, I'm thinking, he's not Billy Graham. He's not the devil. Maybe he is. I don't know. But, you know, he's way down here. You know, what, what about, you know, Jeff Love? Where would you put him? Definitely not Billy Graham. Not Adolf Hitler, right? Somewhere down in here, he's not that great. So where would you put yourself? If you said, God is perfect, and this is his standard, most of you would say, well, I'm, I'm definitely not Adolf Hitler. Uh, you'd say, well, I'm not Billy Graham now. I'm better than Jeff Love, though, that's for sure. So I'm going up here somewhere. You know, maybe you put yourself here. And wherever you put yourself, it doesn't matter. There's still a gap between where you're at and perfection. So God says, that's my standard. My standard is perfection. To spend eternity with me, it's holiness, it's perfection. And so he said, somebody's got to make up the gap. So that's why Jesus went to the cross, to pay for the price, the difference between this gap for our sin. And he makes up the, the gap. That's what it means to put our faith in him. That's what we're doing when we celebrate communion together. We're remembering with grateful hearts that he went to the cross and made up the gap for us so that when God the Father looks at us with all of our failures, with all of our sin, all the guilt and shame of our past, he says, I'm removing all of that because of Jesus' sacrifice. Aren't you glad for that? So that's what we're doing. We're celebrating that today as we take communion. Jesus, the night before he was crucified, he took the bread and he told the disciples, he said, I want you to take this and I want you to remember my body is broken for you. So let's take and let's remember with grateful hearts. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave your life for us. Thank you that your body was given on the cross for us. Jesus took the, the wine and he said, every time you do this, remember that my blood was shed for you. Let's take and let's drink and let's remember. Jesus, we are so grateful that you went for the, to the cross for us. And my prayer is that this year that we would live lives in view of the cross. You paid a tremendous price for us to live the life that you created us to live. We celebrate that life this morning. And Lord, I know that there are some here today who would say, that they've never made that decision, and we celebrate. This is an opportunity for them to make that decision for the first time. And if that's you, you can pray that prayer. Just say, Lord, I invite you into my life. My faith goal is to begin a journey with you right now. Forgive my sin, the guilt and shame of my past. Let this be my best year ever. Lord, I pray that for all of us. Help us, give us wisdom as we plan this week. We are planning to plan with you as we make our plans, we want to plan with you. Show us our faith goal coming into 2015. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In just a couple of moments, the ushers are going to come forward and receive your uh, connection.